What's up, fellas? This video is about oil in my propane. Why is there oil in propane? What is all this gunk in the propane clogging everything up? Look how much fluid is coming out of this particular batch. What we got going on here is a small little pilot light setup that I've put together for a small demonstration to show you guys a property of propane that some of you may have encountered in the past and been baffled by. Some of you have never seen this before, and as a result, may cause you some problems down the road. I just learned this stuff recently, so I want to share it with you guys. Propane, come to find out, has some pretty mysterious properties to it. What we got right here is a bottle of propane, and it has about 130 to 139 PSIs or so inside the tank here. And I've got a fairly long piece of hose connected to this thing because I was doing a test for a customer the other day. Some very mysterious things happened as a result of that test that I've encountered in the past and I wanted to go ahead and do a video on it. And basically what happens with propane is this mysterious oil starts coming up all over the place, clogging up regulators, clogging spuds, clogging up refrigerators and RVs and things like that. This oil is something called heavy ends. And heavy ends are a fraction of propane that is dissolved by the propane gas and can actually precipitate out of solution upon um, depressurization of the gas. So if you've got a long hose like this of any kind connected to propane, this event can happen. Another thing can happen in these hoses is they say the propane can leach plasticizers out of the hose. So you cannot just hook any old hose up to propane and use it on a system that will be left unattended. If you've ever come across um, a situation where you were finding large volumes of oil in your propane, this video is going to touch on that subject because it can tear stuff up, especially in RVs. Propane is a very dirty fuel. It's not what you think it is. Um, to the novice or someone who's just not informed on the subject like I was, propane is just a, a liquefied propane gas. It's like it's laboratory grade pure stuff. Nothing in it. You're good to go. Well, that is couldn't be further from the truth. The fact is propane often has a lot of butane in it and some other things called heavy ends. Now these heavy end oils dissolve in the, the propane itself. The, the gas even, from what I'm hearing, it can even dissolve in the gas. So the gas itself has these heavy end vapors in it. If you look on the forums for people who have RVs, some, some of this mysterious property of propane is discussed there as well. And these heavy end oil fractions are said to dissolve in the propane gas itself. And they come out of solution or they precipitate out of the gas upon depressurization. So anytime you have a, a little bit of hose hooked up to a tank like this that gets propane gas pressurized in it, something happens the gas will begin to liquefy in the hose and one of the reasons that takes place is because you see here we've got a small flame and i've got this little needle valve here this needle valve is already starting to get really cold i'm going to let it run for a while and eventually it'll get even colder and what that's causing to happen is propane will start liquefying on the back end of this valve because it's being cooled a little bit. Propane will liquefy at 120 PSI, I think. At 123 PSI, propane can be liquefied. So when we gas up this line, essentially what happens is it um, begins to equilibrialize. And once the gas pressure hits 120 PSI's, it can actually start to liquefy in the line itself. And what exacerbates that, in some cases, 
is when you have a regulator that has a small little expansion valve scenario going on. Anytime you have an expansion, you have a cooling effect. Or this is adiabatic expansion, so you're going to have a temperature change. And that temperature change will definitely liquefy some propane into this line. Now, I did not read that theory. That's a, just basically my theory of what's going on here. See that oil already. You see all that? Look at that. So with just that quick little shot there, we got seven and a half milliliters of oil simply from spraying the propane out of this. That adiabatic expansion causes a cooling to take place in this area. And when that cooling takes place, this oil falls out of solution. Or not out of solution. It, it somehow is um, precipitated out of the gas itself. All that butane and stuff that was probably boiling. So if you're going to be running solenoid valves and stuff on propane and you've never done it before and you're getting ready to build something or you may build something in the future, remember the information in this video and some of the experiments that you're going to see. Okay, so this is the experiments that I was doing for a customer. This is a pilot light, and I'm trying to ensure that no matter how much air I turn on, this pilot light doesn't get sucked out, because that's what was happening. It would light the flame, but sometimes the pilot light would go out after I did that. So that's how I discovered all this oil mess. It was causing some huge problems in this test, and I just had to share this with you guys, because uh, I'm baffled. I mean, have you ever seen that much oil spray out of propane before? Okay, I think we're set. Okay, Alan, one of the problems with propane systems when you have them hooked up straight to the bottle is, see all the sweat on this nozzle right here? I'll try to get it zoomed in. This thing is very cold right now. What's happening is this line is pretty much filling up with liquid propane. As the pressure in the line builds, some of the propane condenses back into a liquid. And uh, so what we need to do is hook a regulator up to the tank so that the pressure coming to this point of the line is only at about 30 PSI's or maybe 10 PSI's of even that. It is working. So I'll let this beaker boil for a while and then we'll see if there's anything left after an hour or so. But uh, this is definitely the stuff that I seen. I had no idea you could get that much out of propane. Heavy ends are calling this stuff. So if you're ruining barbecue equipment or if you've ruined some stuff in your RV, they say you have to place a regulator in a vertical position because of that. I could be wrong to where it's like upright. That way this oil will naturally flow down into the drain leg that they put on propane systems. If you've ever seen that little drain leg that's on there, this is why. Look at this. I don't know about you guys, but I am amazed. I need to know this too. I've built a lot of propane equipment that use heavy flows. But like I said, they say you may encounter this and never see it again in your life. That's the part that sucks. All the propane equipment that I've designed over the years, and uh, this is, uh, well, it's only been about four years. But uh, never seen that before. Just had to share this one with you guys. And just to corroborate you guys who said that you don't believe it's to plasticizer. Now, I'm not saying plasticizers don't leach, but what we're looking at in that beaker is not a plasticizer. There's more plasticizer than hose there. Like yesterday, I got twice as much oil 
as I showed in today's experiment. And um, there's really not that much hose there. There's only 40 liters of hose. If you were to melt this hose down and turn it into a block, you know what I mean? We're getting more oil than hose itself, let alone the notion that this is a plasticizer. Vehicle manufacturers do state that you have to use propane appropriate hose or compatible hose because of the plasticizer leaching process. It does it to all hoses, even the propane hose, they just last longer. They say you gotta replace it after a year on a vehicle, unless it's a metal line. So it's not plasticizer. That's gotta be the heavy ends oil and Menards has got to sell some of the crappiest propane I've ever seen in my life. So now that we know it's there, what can we do about it? Well, one thing that I suggest would be to connect a pressure regulator on the bottle so that the pressure in the hose never reaches the liquef liquefaction pressure of propane. That's problematic in some scenarios, but it would definitely work. Some systems don't need regulators. Like if you're running a forge burner or something like that, this crap don't matter. This is for delicate equipment and this oil pretty much just explains why you keep ruining your $50 Benzermatic trigger torch or whatever. Man, I hate that. So you wanna know why your $50 torch doesn't light anymore? Well, you need to stop using these refillable tanks. It's this oil. Propane is filthy. So, might be a better reason to check out a map gas and only use map gas on that bottle or on one of these, um, these deals right here. Now, the propane itself didn't do this. Obviously, I got mad and threw it, but give me a break, man. It's like 95 degrees out here when that happens, so... In addition to that, they recommend running a filter if you don't have a regulator hooked up to the bottle. Um, however, I don't think a filter would, would solve this problem based on what we just saw because it's happening um, upstream from where a filter would be placed. I don't think we'd put a filter on the other side of the valve, but you would have to according to what we just seen. I think a liquid separator similar to that used in a pneumatic system would probably be appropriate for this. I don't think it would take it all out, but um, an oil separator or a water separator for a pneumatic system might work. I don't know how propane compatible that is. And uh, yeah, that's about the only two solutions I could see. Unfortunately, the best solution provided seems to be finding another propane vendor. Apparently not all propane has is the same amount of heavy ends in it.